coming to stuff by himself. Uh, I'll let our chairman Paul let her speak first. Uh, and just introduce our new head coach of the Western Sydney Wanderers, Paul. Morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day out there, and it's a special occasion, and uh, we're very fortunate and privileged to, to have Carl with us and JT, my CEO, of course. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, we have made a change, a significant change. And Carl will be taking over the running of the football club as far as uh, professional league is concerned. And we're very proud, very privileged. Uh, I've known Carl for a little while and uh, I think he's an exceptional human being, an absolute gentleman, a man who played the game at the highest level, knows the game, I would say, as well as anyone, or probably better, and I think is a perfect fit for our club. We have certainly spoken in the past to numerous people, and it's our duty to find the best possible candidate for our club. And I'm absolutely sure in my mind that Carl fits that bill. It's, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, I like to think we are a, a big club and we are to our fans, first and foremost. We are to ourselves to find the best candidate to lead us in this, to, to our future. And uh, I've got absolute 100% certainty that Carl is the right guy for the job. Uh, look, it's a very, very exciting uh, day for us and um, um, uh, it's been challenging in terms of ensuring that our A-League's fortunes return to where they need to be and uh, I can categorically state we, you know, we've been looking for the right fit for, for, for a while now and um, Carl is the right fit. We've committed for a period of three years and the next three seasons are going to be an exciting time for the Western Sydney Wanderers, exciting time for our fans and our members in the regional Western Sydney and um, uh, we look forward to, to, to Bank West uh, play, uh, hosting an entertaining brand of football. It's one of the characteristics that, that uh, alerted us to, to the way Carl's team play, the implement, implementation of the style. You know, we've, we, we've built a beautiful house here. We've, we've done everything possible here and I said previously, you know, the A-League thing is the only thing we need to get right. It's a seismic part. So, you know, we just need to put the roof on the house and craftsmanship that, that Carl will bring um, and his skills and, and his imprimatur will certainly put a roof that's uh, befitting the house that we've built here and we're very excited and along with Kenny Miller is a, who's a noted name in European football as well and um, um, the other element is they've got experience in the salary cap league and the ML, MLS success and, and uh, in a very short period of time they've had um, uh, um, a very successful period of the left, 10 and 11 games and one defeat in the Australian context, new to the league, and taking a team that was at the time struggling, and if you took, take the form table at the time, um, they ended up leading the league towards the end. So, very excited. Um, uh, it was a change that we needed to make now because we believe in this season and uh, the opportunity arose now. So, I'm very proud to have you here. Oh. Thank you. I'll just let Carl say a few words and then we'll uh, open up for questions. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks to Paul and John. Um, it's been a whirlwind 24, 48 hours. Um, as soon as I got permission to speak to the guys here, uh, their vision of what they want their football club to be aligned with, how I see the game, uh, saying and doing are two different things. Uh, my job is to do. Uh, it's easy to say things, but you know that, that comes down to hard work. And one of my qualities, I generally believe, um, people who know me will be to get to know the person. Uh, if I know the person, then I can make them accountable uh, for where we want to go because this football club wants to win and that's certainly in my remit as well. So looking forward to being here. Uh, great, great opportunity, fantastic facilities. Um, you know, people talk all the time about European football and, and football clubs over there, but the facilities and the infrastructure here are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting to work with, with all the players here that we have and, and getting my mind and my eyes on the academy because there's so many players that have probably not, you know, not been seen or not been given a pathway to play. Um, and that happens in football, but you know, part of my remit will be to allow these kids to play. 
Carl, through you, there's a vote of confidence in you. Um, but why should Wanderers fans be excited about your head coach? Yeah, it's uh, three years and 24 hours in football is a long time, as I can uh, vouch for that. But, um, you know, contracts are, are there. Uh, belief that the club have in me. You know, I was at my previous club, you know, before I went to Newcastle for nearly five years. So, uh, in my first managerial job. But, you know, I've, uh, prior to taking my first job, you know, I'd been studying a lot and uh, I've been learning a lot. I've been on all the, the coaching courses that I think that every young player, young coach needs to go on to learn, uh, to gather that experience. Um, yes, it was a short stay in Newcastle, um, but the opportunity w when it came was too big an opportunity for me to turn down. Uh, as I said, it's a fantastic club, fantastic people here as well who, who've got the drive and will and desire to win. So uh, it's, a, it's a project, you know, uh, it's not going to be easy. We know that, but you know, I, I want to do it a certain way and it aligned with John and Paul as well. So I look forward to that. And, it wasn't built overnight, it won't happen uh, overnight, but it will happen over a period of time. You're taking over a team that has one of the biggest in the country and has underachieved over the last few years. Um, and some fans and others might say that when it comes to the playing group, there's a culture problem, there's a problem with the culture here. How might you approach that? I mean, you seem your, your philosophy is to have a hands on approach yep. to players and um, have good relationships. Them. So, how do you uh, approach that? Well, do it stage by stage. Obviously, not just the playing group, uh, the staff, the support staff, the people in the office. We are one, and we have to become one because, you know, I, if I'm going to be successful at this football club, I need every single person, you know, rowing in the right direction, uh, and that's my job to get them on board. You know, I have to. Uh, build relationships individually and collectively, not just with players but staff. Um, and we ha said we have to be on the same page, and we'll do that. You know, my job is to. People talk about culture and environment all the time in football, and whenever there's changes, usually, you know, that gets brought up. What I will say is, I create a learning environment. That is how I I believe as a player I wanted a manager to be, and that's what I want here. So and that's not just for players, that's for coaches as well. Because you know, if you talk about assistant coaches, they would like to be managers one day, and and people within the office would like to be to be John. So it has to be a learning environment, and it will be. And especially when you've got that amount of young players, which we have, we've got 13 players that have come through the program already on the roster, you know, and that probably might be increased as well. Um, if you don't coach them and develop them, then I won't be doing my job, and I certainly can do my job. So you will see me hands-on approach on the training field and a hands-on approach in, in the offices as well. Paul, well, just uh, about three months ago, John Bogomani was unveiled as a permanent head coach. Why was the decision made now to make a, a change before the start of his full season? Look, it's our job, to, probably it's my job and it's John's job to find the best suitable candidate for the job for the future. Uh, and we believe to take uh, uh, this club to the level that we should be, or we want to be, I think uh, this, this gentleman is the right man for the job. It's as simple as that. We, we use our judgment, in our judgment, Carl is the right guy to take our club for the future. What were the problems that arose between the last season and now? There's no problems. I, I wouldn't classify them as problems. I think it's always our job to improve our squad, improve our playing staff, include our office staff as part of management to find the best suitable people to take us to the next level. Look, that's a continuous thing. It's, a, it's an endless thing. I think also, Dom, if I can jump in there, the the last on the the, the, the incumbent at the time was a, a long-term interim appointment. Um, then COVID hit, um, and then there was a restart of the season. And when the restart with the season was the season, the, the following season was to recommence in, in October, and that was the scheduled time at date at the time. And and certainly uh, we sat down with Paul on the board and said, well, we need to make a a call in terms of whether it's going to remain an interim. Um, but with the season being changed um, and uh, um, to being delayed to the to the back end of this year, um, and also pre-season being longer and, and whatnot, and, and the, the extension of the incumbent was for an, only for another nine ten months. So we thought, uh, in terms of the opportunity arising here, with the future, solidify the future of the football club, um, and get a, get an understanding of what we need to be for a longer period, um, and that's they're the circumstances that led to to where we are today. So, I mean, this is absolutely no disrespect to Paul, but, uh, 
So job board managers only ever going to be short term appointment despite the amount of Look, I'll say it again. It's our job, our function is to find the best suitable people for the job. That's it. That's management. That's uh, that's uh, that's in business, in life. Yeah, well, we got we got to reassess ourselves every year, and we got to look at the new season. By the way, we're looking at it all super optimistically. I think we got we, we we got an opportunity, and I think Carl is the right guy for the job. That's it. So, so Paul, at the end of this year, doesn't go to plan. You looking to replace again? Or, or? <laughs> no, no, no. Look, it doesn't go to plan. Look, our club is an ambitious club. We want to be in the, we, want to, we don't want to be in the top six. We want to be the top. I make no apologies about that. We're a very ambitious club. I mean, most of you do know me. We are ambitious. We want to be the top, and we can do everything in our power to make that happen. That's why this gentleman's here to take us there. Is there guarantee, if that's what you're asking me, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee in life. There's no guarantee in football. Football less guaranteed than life, to be honest. It, 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 that's how it works. I mean, uh, you do your best. That's all you can do. You both mentioned how Carl was the, the right fit for the role. Can you get into the specifics of that? Why, why I, think I, right I, I think his background in football, for me, his knowledge of football, uh, the meeting that I had or the meetings we had, his character, his attitude, his uh, work at work attitude, which is absolutely phenomenal, and his commitment to uh, the top team, which I call A League, and his commitment to the youth of tomorrow. So he's the right guy for the job. Am I sure? Of course, as sure as you can be, as sure as you can be. You've used to be mentioned a lot, Carl, is that there's going to be less transfers. It's going to be focused on a lot of academy then. I take it. Well, I think when you have a, an academy which has a number of talented players as, as much as we do here, uh, I'd be very naive as a manager of this football club to not look in, in, internally. I ha have to do that. I want to do that because, for the, you know, first of all, we, we, the objective is to win. We, we know that. Um, what I don't want to do is block pathways. My job is to unblock pathways for these young players. Uh, and that takes time. That takes decision making. That takes me having the ability to watch these players because there's no point having two senior players in the fight for one position because experienced players, the last thing they want is a young, energetic young lad chasing their position. And my history suggests that I will play young players. I'm not afraid to throw them in. But then the, the management side of me deals with the senior player and how I have to deal with him, keeping him on board, but leaving him out of the team. Well, that's part of managing. Uh, and that's part of understanding what you have to do as a football manager to be successful within a football club. So will there be young players looked at, given the opportunity? 100%. Is it a big focus? Yes, it is. But they'll only be put up and pushed through when they're ready. But I can't say they're ready when I haven't seen them. And my job will be spend hours and hours with the academy, with Crookie, uh, within the academy, with those guys, to make my own decisions based upon the information that they give me. But you see me all over the place, which is part of my job. Is that going to be a real tough balancing act, like in trying to get immediate success and bringing you through at the same yeah. time? So they don't really go hand in hand usually, do they? Uh, they don't sometimes, no. Um, but that's my job, and that's why I'm accountable for it, and I will be, and I'll take responsibility for that. But my job is to manage the the, the team, the first team. I, I need to get results. We want to get results. As you said, that um, we haven't reached the playoffs in the last three years, which we know. Uh, I think the, the, the guys have said that we need that not to happen uh, you know I'm joining a club which I think not just the top six we want top four top two you know we want to win championships you've done it before um oh, I like that pressure pressure is football Pre you know there's, there's so much pressures in life in general so this is a pressure which you love having because you I'm doing something that I love something that I brought up in and I'll be accountable for it no problem JC you mentioned you appointed JC uh, some four months to see out the next season, and you said just now that COVID had rearranged some of your, your priorities, and so you made the decision three months in uh, to make that change. So was it a wrong call to appoint JP? No, no, because at the end of the day, we were, uh, JP was there for, as an interim, uh, in, in an interim role for a long period of time. COVID happened, then we had the restart of the season wasn't uh, certain as to when it was going to happen, and when the following season was going to happen. Um, but we had to sign players, we had to, get, we had to get to an understanding, move forward with the season as it was for an October start, and 
we extended it by nine to ten months, um, a, a more permanent range for nine to ten months. We're here with Carl today for a period of three years. So, you know, we've got some clarity in terms of when the season's going to start again. It's been delayed. And we've got an opportunity to start afresh. And, and, and now that we know that uh, what we want and how we want it and seeing the way that Carl's team's played, and, um, you know, Carl's here for a long period of time and we're very excited about what's going to happen. So, yes, I know you didn't make the wrong decision by wanting Jack Bigfoot. At the time, at the time they're the, that's the information that we had and they're the, they're the, they're the decisions that were made. And, and certainly um, it wasn't a, a, a three-year appointment because we, we believed that we, you know, we needed some certainty into us where we were going to go. Have you had certainty for the next year? Well, in terms of the circumstances where it was, October start was the original conversation as to where the A-League was going to start. Um, so we just couldn't wait and continue and have an interim appointment for another season. Cool, you've, uh, well, Carl is now, I think, uh, the fifth coach uh, since 2017. Uh, you've given him a long-term contract, which is a significant show of faith. But what makes this appointment, and why, why are you uh, very confident of, um, of Carl changing things for the, for the Wanderers? You can, only you, you can only use your judgment for me. Let's face reality here. At the end of the day, you use your best judgment going forward. I mean, you pick people that you believe in. <laughs> is there a bank guarantee? No, there isn't. There's no bank guarantee. Do I believe he's the right person? Absolutely. Am I 100%? 101%. Is there a guarantee? No, there isn't. No, there isn't. It's exactly like buying a play. I mean, I don't have to remind you, gentlemen, <laughs> or ladies, there is, my apologies, there, there, there are, Players get sold every day for fortunes, 80 million, 100, I could go rattle off a, a dozen of them. And they're sitting on a bench. I mean, if you use your best judgment, that's all you can do. We use our best judgment. I mean, I, I, use my, I, I do that every day of my life. That's all I got, my judgment. Usually not bad, uh, a pretty good track record, but uh, I believe in the guy. In fact, I say to you, I believe in this guy more than I believe in most. I really believe in this guy. I think he's the right fit for our club, which is also very important, this word fit. He's the right person for our club. Well, there's a lot of coaches out there, to be honest with you, they're okay, they're not bad, but they were not the right fit for our club. Definitely not. When did you first think the car was gettable, and when did you first start talking to him about potentially coming? To be totally honest with you, when I saw him take Newcastle over, and I saw how the team was playing and I saw the squad that he had and what he did with that squad, to me, is quite significant. Very significant. He's done an incredible job with that squad, if I may say so. Incredible job. And uh, the style of football, his attitude, and uh, the way he manages people, the way he talks to people, the way he behaves, all that sort of stuff. It's just, just the perfect fit for our club. Carl, I'll say your predecessor in his press conference when he was announced as head coach said that by the time his contract had come to an end, he wanted to have one trophy. Uh, is that, do you have the same ambition or has he, has he poisoned your chalice in, in your first together uh, with the expectation to win a trophy? No, listen, I think every, every coach will have their own aspirations and ideas of what they consider success. You know, if, if whatever club you join, if you're joining a big football club, there is that, that will, that desire, that need, not just internally but externally, to, to win. Uh, and I've no doubt about where I think I can take this team. And speaking to John and Paul, especially in the last 24, 48 hours, it's clear that they want to win. Uh, and that matches up with how I, how I see things, what I want to achieve. So will I come out and say it? No. I think the, the, the information that you get from me will be seen. And when I say that, it's seen on the football pitch because that's where I do my, the majority of my work and the managing I do behind the scenes. So I won't be, you won't get me on record making statements like that. I'll quietly go about my business because I'm a, a very quiet person, but I'm an open person as well. So, but have I come here to be successful? Without a doubt, yes. Carl, what about, the, what about the Jets? Are it difficult to leave and do you have a message with the Jets fans who might be a bit annoyed that you've, you've left? Uh, yes, it was difficult, and it was difficult because I built some very, very good relationships over the 10 months. But, you know, there was an agreement in place prior to me coming over from Major League Soccer after 10 years being there with my family. And, and my daughter still is in, in Vancouver at the moment, which was always the, 
the grey area for me that I could talk to football clubs if an opportunity arose, whether that be here in Australia or back in Major League Soccer. Um, and that agreement was in place, and that's why we're here today. Um, you know, I enjoyed my time there. There's some really, really good people there working with Laurie and, and the players, and the players were fantastic for me. But that was my job. My job was to teach the players, coach the players, and get the best out of their players. Uh, and that's moved, I've moved on. And now my objective here is to get to know these guys, find out what makes them tick on a personal level and then on a playing level and push them to hopefully limits that they've not quite been at the moment to and then add with the additions of some younger players and some new arrivals um, to try and get that success that we all crave. Carl, how much was the financial position of Newcastle? It's been well documented the difference that they have. Was that a factor even coming to the Western Sydney or was it just um, Possibly, and what I'd say with that is, what, what you've got to remember is I, I don't like talking about people's business, that's not what I do. Um, Newcastle have been, and Laurie's been working night and day for months and months and months to try and sell a football club, so, um, you know, and there's a lot of uncertain times, not just in football clubs, in, in life in general. Um, was it the main reason? No. Was it a reason? Yes. Uh, but I'm joining the biggest club in Australia, and when you get that opportunity, um, and that comes calling, you don't say no. And I certainly didn't have to meet the guys because I know how driven they are as well.